What's up? Today I'm really excited to share with you an aggressive and universal opening for white. Why am I saying that this is a universal opening? Because you don't need to study Rilo Pass or Italian game, the Two Knights game, and a number of other openings that you typically need to, to know if you're gonna play pawn e4 on the first move, but we're narrowing it down to the single aggressive opening variation called the Evans Gambit. Now, the Evans Gambit occurs after the first moves pawn e4, black responds with their pawn to e5, and then after knight of 3 knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, instead of the classical lines such as pawn c3 or knight to c3, we're gonna gambit our pawn by playing pawn b4, trying to transition into the attack right out of the gate. Now, this opening is not really loved by the modern professionals because indeed, playing this against a guy like Carlson or Caruana, who knows all the opening theory, up to the move 20 or sometimes even 30 and they analyze it with their supercomputers for weeks and months yeah i mean sacrificing the pawn is risky against them but that certainly not does not relate to you playing against other chess lovers and those uh, on this amateur level this opening is gonna work wonders for you and it's gonna work tremendously well in fact even kasparov used it against anand and won in a classical game so it's definitely one of the most underrated openings and it's simple to learn you'll be equipped with everything that you need to know about this right after watching this video now before we dive into variations let me also share just a little bit of uh, the general theory about this the general planning and why do you want to sacrifice a pawn here on b4 Basically, this is a decoy. You want one of the black's pieces, whether the knight or bishop, it doesn't matter, to get there on b4. And as soon as that happens, again, it doesn't matter if they capture by the knight or bishop, you're gonna play pawn c3, and you do this with a tempo, because now the black is forced to lose the time to move this bishop back. And as the bishop moves back somewhere, usually it's played either to a5 or c5, doesn't really matter, then you also have another extra tempo for pushing the pawn to d4, which gives you a nice pawn in the center. Also, you start attacking right away. The pawn is hitting the bishop over there. It's also ready to be pushed forward and attack the knight, possibly. In addition to that, you're also having a lot of open lines and diagonals. Your bishop from c4 is already targeting this pawn on f7, which is the weakest pawn and the weakest square in the black's position in the close proximity to the black king. Also, your knight is ready to jump somewhere there and to join the attack. Maybe your bishop from c1 can go over there to g5 and start attacking the queen. Overall, you're gonna finish your development quickly and start putting pressure on black. And you get all these nice attacks just for the cause of one little pawn. So the risk isn't that huge. Therefore, in, in the good case scenario, you just crush your opponent with a beautiful attack. But even in the worst case scenario, if your attack fails, you're still having some compensation and an active game for the cost of one pawn, which is not too bad either. Now, let me address one of the main questions perhaps that you have. What, what, what does computer and statistics show about this? Maybe it's just an incorrect opening overall. Now we're shifting to the database with games so that we can see how it works out in reality. Here in the right corner, you can see the statistics, the number of games played, and the most played move is usually at the top. No, it's not usually, it's always at the top here. So the most played move by black is pawn e5 indeed, which is quite expected. We're going knight of three. By far, pretty much all, everybody responds knight to c6. And now we play bishop c4. Again, the most usual response of black is bishop c5. And here, instead of all the classical moves, we're going for the Evans Gambit pawn b4. Now, they usually capture here. Again, pretty much always they do that. Now we play pawn c3. The bishop comes back to either a5 or c5, and we're gonna analyze both of these moves. Let's say they are going back to a5. The main move is d4, and it's a good move, but I suggest that you actually just cancel for simplicity. And after you cancel, you're then ready to push this pawn to d4 with no problems on the next move. Again, the top choice of black is the move knight f6. It's just natural. They're trying to develop and hide their king to safety. Now it's time for you to do something because you do not want them to just finish their development comfortably. You want to put pressure on black, start attacking right off the way and use the fact that you're ahead in development. So we play pawn d4 first, challenging black in the center, attacking this pawn on e5. And usually, as you can see here, again, the majority of players will take here on d4, and now they're still hoping to castle, and therefore, in order to prevent this from happening, we're gonna play the move bishop a3. Not the top choice, as you can see, so you will catch your lots of your opponents off guard. Now, the purpose of this move is that we're now controlling the f8 square, and therefore, the black skin cannot run away that easily into safety. 
they'll usually try to play pawn d6 to block this diagonal and still saying, hey, I'm gonna castle anyway, but then you play pawn e5, breaking through in the center. One of the key motifs here in this gambit is to open up the files and to start your attack against the centralized king. Now, here's an interesting thing, by the way. Let me even come back here. Let's turn on the engine and see what it says. What's the evaluation that Stockfish 14 would, would give us? After a little bit of calculation, it says that it's about equal. Black is a bit better, minus 0.3, so slightly more favorable for black. Okay, but now if you look at the actual statistics, after the move 0.5, white won 60% of games and black won 37% of games. So in reality, white has an overwhelming advantage here. That's why I always say that you shouldn't just blindly rely on evaluation of engine because what engine says is certainly different compared to you know the real practice of you playing against real human beings. Oh, by the way, even Stockfish says now that white is in fact slightly better. But also, you know, your opponents are not Stockfish. They will not play the best moves all the time. And as soon as, soon as you play pawn e5, as you can see here that the top choice of black is either pawn takes e5 or knight takes e5, and both are in fact losing mistakes. So the most played move is pawn takes e5, and now let's look at the evaluation right now. You see that it skyrockets to plus 3, so basically white has already won the game. And it's just the move 9, you see? So that's how it will really often happen in your own games, because your opponents don't know all these lines so well, and your attack is extremely dangerous, and just one inaccurate move by black can lead them to an immediate disaster. Now, let me show you why this current move is so bad for black. All right, we're coming back to the analysis board. So here is the black's problem. After they captured here on e5, our bishop is still cutting off black's king and he can't castle anymore. And then you are ready to just start attacking it with every piece that you have along the e-file, for example, with your rook from here, from e1. Also, your bishops are extremely active. You can play queen b3, a very common move in the Evans Gambit, to take aim at this pawn on f7, and it's actually almost a checkmate, and very difficult for black to cover it. Again, notice that this diagonal is covered by the other bishop of white, and therefore black can't put, put a rook there, or they still can't castle. They have to play an awkward move queen d7, just to defend this pawn. But now we're adding fuel to the fire by playing rook to e1, trying to take aim at the king along the e-file and we are ready to capture here on e5 and completely blow out the black's defense here. So they usually play pawn e4 desperately trying to keep the e-file closed, but then there are a number of ways for white to win the game. You can play knight d2, I mean basically you have a lot of great stuff here. The simplest I guess is just knight g5, the most straightforward attacking attempt. Attacking here this pawn on f7 with your knight, but also you still want to eliminate this pawn from e4 and open up the e-file for your rook. Okay, so now anyway, the main threat is knight takes f7 or maybe bishop takes f7. Therefore, black needs to do something about that. When black plays knight to e5, you can now capture this pawn on e4 and that's the end basically. After an exchange on e4, now your rook is attacking the knight, it's pinned down to the king, there is not much black can do here. You're also threatening to just capture with the pawn here and win the knight after that because it's pinned. Usually they play queen to f5, and after that again you have so many ways to win the game. You can play queen b5, for example, which is a triple attack to minor pieces and to the king. So that's one way to win. In the game we're analyzing, they chosen a more beautiful way uh, to finish the game, which was bishop takes f7, which is a temporary sacrifice. Notice that the knight is pinned, so the knight cannot move. Therefore black has to capture by the queen, but then rook takes e5 check, and that is the end. The bishop still cuts off the king, therefore it can't go there. The rook delivers check to the king, and if the king moves, and it's forced to move, then queen takes f7, winning the queen and delivering checkmate on the next move. So that's how effectively you can crush your opponent who seemingly did nothing wrong and just played natural developing moves. We have just analyzed that taking here on e5 is not really an option for black, even though that's exactly what most of your opponents will play in reality, but doing that cuts off the king Therefore, black skin can't castle anymore, and you can take it by a direct storm. What if instead of taking on e5, they play another popular move, knight to e4, somehow trying to keep the position in the center closed and still hoping to castle? In this case, there is also a very interesting variation that can really happen in your games. You take here on d6, and after they recapture with the knight, they're attacking your bishop, hoping that you'll move it away and they'll sneak to the king side but you don't want them to do that, so you play rook e1, check to the king, 
and black needs to cover it. The bishop covers the e6 square, therefore black can't move their bishop there, so they go knight e7. And after that, you still ignore the black's threat to the bishop, because it turns out that there is no threat there. And you just play knight g5, you rush into your attack. And it turns out that the bishop is not really hanging here, because if they ever try to capture it, you've got rook takes e7. It's completely devastating black's position here. Check, it's supported by the bishop, and black will probably have to give up the queen, and they'll be down on material and losing the game. They can do that. Let's get this move back. Now, in, and you're actually going to take here on f7. Therefore, black usually castles, thinking that now they're in safety, but you still take on f7 anyway, which is really, really funny here. Now, if they take it by the knight, this time they still fail due to similar tactics. Their knight on e7 is hanging, it's under the massive fire of your pieces, and you can capture it with the bishop, which would also attack the heavy pieces of black, and therefore, yeah, here you're also easily winning. So they can do that. Let's get this move back. If they don't want to take by the knight, then they have to take by the rook, which seems advantageous for black, because after an exchange, they're having two minor pieces versus a rook, which is normally advantageous for blam, for them, and it's all good, but then queen h5 wins the game for white. Check to the king, and a sudden attack of the bishop on the opposite side of the board. Therefore, once the king moves somewhere, it doesn't really matter, you grab the bishop, and now you're having a material advantage and a strong attack on top of that. So it's a very unusual combination, and it gives you a very spectacular win. And there is also the second variation here of the Evans Gambit that you need to know. After a bishop takes here, you play pawn c3 still, and we analyze that black may return, retreat their bishop to a5. But another common move of black is bishop to c5. It's, it's the second most played move, and therefore definitely you gotta know what to do here. When they play bishop to c5, you can strike in the center right away by playing pawn d4, taking advantage of the fact that you are now attacking the bishop and the pawn. Therefore, they will take it. And after that, even though you could recapture, and that still gives you a good position, the little disadvantage of an immediate recapture is that black can play back bishop b4, delivering check to your king, and they gain a tempo by delivering this check. And in order to prevent this from happening, let's take this move back. Instead of recapturing by the pawn, you first the castle, aiming to recapture on the next move in the most comfortable scenario, you know, where they can't check you anymore and you will just build up this beautiful pawn center and attack black's bishop on c5. In this position, of course, there are many moves that black can potentially play. Usually they capture here on c3, which makes sense. Because if not, if they don't capture, then you're going to capture by yourself and build up this beautiful pawn in the center, attack the bishop, everything's cool, right? For, for that reason, they usually capture on c3. Not even that they want this extra pawn that badly, but they just don't want you to capture there by yourself. Of course, again, I understand somebody will ask in comments, what if they play some other move? Well, you know, you need to learn how to attack, how to find the right attacking moves, because that's the foundation. I remember when I was like 12 years old and I got my first really serious chess coach, he told me, Igor, you need to learn the skill of attack. Without that, nothing else makes sense. Nothing else will work. And that's the same message that I can you know, carry on to you, and I do believe that as well. You need to learn how to be an attacking player, how to find the right attacking moves. If you don't know, I've got a free masterclass that covers it, you may check this out. Anyway, we're gonna see the most common move, which is pawn takes c3. And it's actually a mistake, even though definitely it's hard to see it if you aren't prepared, but luckily for you, you will be prepared, unlike your opponents. So, the move pawn to c3, expecting you to recapture with your knight, fails to a beautiful sacrifice. Bishop takes f7. In fact, it's not even a sacrifice, really, because after king takes, you're gonna play queen d5 check, and you're gonna get your piece back immediately, but along the way, you're also completely exposed black's king. Now the king has to go back somewhere, usually they try to put it back to safety, king to e8, and now instead of capturing the bishop immediately, you play another very crucial intermediate move. You play queen h5 check before capturing the bishop, provoking black to play pawn g6, because it's check to the king, oops, that is the check to the king, they usually play pawn g6, and this is gonna be a very crucial weakness in black's position, which we're gonna see in just a minute. After queen takes c5, now, Again, notice that black skin moved and therefore it can't castle anymore. It's gonna stuck there in the center, and you're just gonna take back the pawn, you know, play bishop g5 and start this massive attack against black. Black's usual move is pawn d6, trying to kick off your queen. Now you take on c3, and here we can see why it was so crucial for us to provoke black's pawn uh, to be moved to g6. Now this long diagonal is weak, and all of a sudden black's rook on h8 
is actually vulnerable and it can't escape, Black is in big trouble. On top of all the other problems of Black, on top of their main problem with their centralized king, now their rook is in trouble. Usually Black goes Queen f6 trying to you know, offer an exchange, but then you follow up with Bishop to b2, putting more pressure along this diagonal, and Black is actually defenseless. For example, if they trade on c3, you recapture by the Bishop, and now this rook cannot move, and it will be captured anyway, so Black will probably have to give up their knight here, and so you are winning the game. Another really cool variation how you win with simple moves, just basically within several moves, you know. So that just goes to show you how powerful the Evans Gambit is, and again, it's one of the main most played variations of the Evans Gambit. And the next variation is really, really funny, because you exploit Black stereotype, and you win the game right away. We're still analyzing the move bishop c5, we already analyzed bishop a5, the most common move, the second most played move is bishop to c5, now we strike in the center with the move pawn to d4, and after they recapture, instead of taking there immediately, we first castle, aiming to recapture on the next move. We already saw that if they try to capture here, it fails to bishop f7 tactics, followed by queen to d5, and you win. Therefore, that's not an option, let's take this move back. What if black just tries to say, okay, I don't care about the pawn, I just want to develop and quickly castle. In that case, well, you do recapture on d4, attacking the bishop, and as it goes back to b6, you play pawn e5. And in fact, once again, you are winning the game. You're attacking the knight, if it just goes back somewhere, I don't know, somewhere to g8, that's just way too passive, and you can keep pushing the center with the move pawn d5, maybe even pawn d6, and you can completely blockade black, and you're gonna go bishop g5 or knight g5, and it's completely overwhelming, you're gonna win here. So that is just pretty, pretty obviously bad for black. But they still may go into this line because they hope that they have a common counter blow, move pawn d5. And this is a very common reaction for black in lots of different opening variations, not just the Evans Gambit, in the Scotch Gambit and many other openings. As soon as you push in the center with e5, black counter blow with the move pawn d5, and usually it helps black to equalize the game and, you know, to stay in the game. But not in this position. So let me show you why. You capture here on f6, they recapture here on c4, you capture on g7, the rook goes there to g8, and usually those kind of positions are pretty good for black. But, again, in this particular po position it just doesn't work. You play rook e1 check and all of a sudden it's over. I <laughs> mean, it's quite an unfortunate thing for black because, again, like typically this idea for black is really good. But against the Evans gamut it just doesn't work. What's the problem? Well, if the knight goes somewhere there, then, you know, the knight is pinned, it can't move. You just play bishop g5 and you capture it. It's, that's it. That's, that's pretty simple. Now, if they don't uh, defend by the knight, but they play bishop to e6, then it fails to d5. It's another beautiful pin. This time the bishop is pinned, therefore it can't move, and now you're ready to capture it. They can't capture there by the queen, because again, their bishop is still pinned. Still can't move, you would just grab the queen for nothing. And in this case, it just means that due to this double attack and the bishop is pinned, you're gonna surely win one of black's minor pieces and continue your attack. Moreover, you don't even have to hurry because the bishop can't run away anyway, it's pinned. So if they capture on g7, you don't even have to capture right away. You can play bishop b2, let's say, attack the rook. If it goes away, you can even play something like knight c3, you know, finish your development. And you may capture one of these pieces anytime you want when you feel like absolutely comfortable doing that. So that's another cool variation how Black tried their standard idea and it completely failed and you're winning the game. And to wrap this up, here is a puzzle of the day. By the way, the position arose from the Evans Gambit, therefore not only you can brush up your tactical vision, but you can also learn a common tactical motif in the Evans Gambit. It's white to move and win. And if you can find the solution, please write it down in the comments below. Let's see if you can get it. You may wonder how do you react as Black if someone tries playing this against you, and in this video I cover just that. Also, as I mentioned previously, if you want to develop your attacking style of playing and know how to find attacking moves on your own, you're welcome to attend my free masterclass by clicking the link over there. Wishing that you crush all of your opponents in the most spectacular style possible, and I'll talk to you soon.